Hey everyone, I'm Rob and welcome to the test drive. Today I'm in Tulum, Mexico. My wife and I have been on vacation and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly what it's like to rent a car in Mexico, everything that you go through, what the experience is like, what driving in Mexico is like. Now before we get into the video, my wife and I have a giveaway going on on our other channel, the channel that we have together called A Wander Affair. So before you do anything, go on to that channel, subscribe to it, go to the giveaway video because we're giving away a GoPro Hero Session camera. So I'm linking it above and below and we are so excited to give that away. We just want that channel to hit a thousand subscribers and uh, so much more content coming. All of the travel vlogs uh, from this trip are gonna be on that channel and they are going to be awesome. So the first step is to actually choose your rental car company. There are so many different brands to choose from, at least at the Cancun airport. You have all of the traditional US brands like National Enterprise, Hertz, Thrifty, Dollar, I think Avis was there as well. And then you have some Mexican brands as well, like American and a couple others. I chose National because I actually have preferred pricing with them. Now I will say that some brands and the ones I specifically noticed were Budget, Thrifty, Dollar, and American put labels on their cars indicating that it is a rental car. National did not. I didn't see that on any of the cars. For me personally, that's something I like. I think it's just a little more incognito. Now step two is actually choosing the class of car that you want. Most of the cars here are pretty basic. They're more basic than what you typically find in a US rental car. The car I reserved was actually the lowest car class that they had. It was a mini manual, I think is what it was called, but they didn't have any of those. They didn't have the car class above it either. So I ended up with the third level car class which ended up being the Chevy Aveo that I have on this trip. But it was interesting to get in it and see some things that I haven't seen in a very long time. Now the car that I'm driving is a 2017 Aveo. It didn't have power locks. It had manual roll-up windows. It also had manual um, side mirrors, which was really interesting. Obviously, if you rent a higher end car, then you'll get more features. It didn't have Bluetooth for music either, and it has a USB port, but I'm pretty sure that's actually to plug in like a flash drive or maybe an MP3 player. Just a side note, once you get into Tulum, there's really only like one radio station. You have a bunch of radio stations in Cancun, but the further you drive away, um, they kind of all disappear. Another reason I wanted a smaller car is because on some of the roads, like specifically in Tulum, driving a larger SUV can be more difficult. Also with parking, definitely more difficult. The parking lot where we're staying at Nest Tulum is very small. It's just easier, it's less of a hassle, more convenient typically to have a smaller car unless you specifically need a big car for a lot of passengers or a lot of gear. And another thing to be really aware of is that the lower car classes at the rental car companies are typically manuals. I actually wanted a manual. I thought it would be fun, um, but they didn't have any. They didn't have any of the first two car classes and then the car class that the Aveo was in, um, they were all automatics and I was totally fine with that. Somewhere that's really busy and people are driving pretty quickly. It's probably better to have an automatic. I think I would have been totally fine with a manual, but I would recommend that if you're going to drive a manual here, you need to be a really good manual driver. Now, some add-ons that you need to be aware of are regarding insurance. Mexico has a mandatory TPL, it's third-party liability insurance, and it is required on every vehicle in Mexico. This means that unless you have a letter from your insurance company specifically saying that they're gonna cover your rental car in Mexico, which is very unlikely, you're gonna have to pay for third-party liability. When you first look online, you're gonna look at the rental car rates and you're gonna be like, this is so cheap, this is amazing. And it isn't because you do have to get TPL. There's also some coverage above TPL that I would 
probably recommend getting it. Obviously, like in any rental car agency, they're gonna try and sell you the highest level of insurance possible. So you have CDW or some uh, companies call it LDW, it's collision damage waiver or loss damage waiver. Essentially gonna cover majority of incidents with the car. There may be like a small deductible type of thing. I do recommend getting that. I have that already included in my price. And the last thing I would actually really recommend is prepaying the fuel. Reason for that, so you don't have to worry about finding a gas station or paying cash potentially. It, in my opinion, is just a lot easier to prepay the fuel. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I think it's totally worth it. You just bring the car back with whatever fuel is left in it. Um, obviously, if you're not driving very far, then you may wanna reconsider that. But if you're not driving very far and won't be driving, then I don't really know if you need to rent a car at all. Um, we kind of went around all over the place, so I think for us it was definitely better. Like we went to the Cenotes, went to a lot of other cool places. So what's it like to pick up your rental car in Mexico and specifically at the Cancun airport? So once you land, you go through customs, then it's absolute chaos. There's so many people and basically you go up to the rental car counter for the company where you have your reservation and then they basically call a shuttle or their shuttle may already be there and that's gonna take you specifically to the rental car office. So we had to wait maybe 10, 15 minutes for the national shuttle to show up, but there were some other shuttles for other rental car companies that were already there. Once you get to the rental car company, specifically national for me, you fill out all the paperwork, then you go out to the car, they're probably gonna look and see what they have available, then they're gonna find the car for you, and then something that I've never done before, you actually do a walk around with the rental car agent, and they're gonna ask you to point out every scratch that you see, you may see like what about that one, what about that one? Basically they want to mark down everything and I think they specifically want you um, to point out whatever you can find basically to agree on what damage is already on the car. And something that I read before I got here was that they're basically going to convert um, the US price that you booked online to pesos, but everything that I did um, paperwork wise and everything in the national office was actually in um, US dollars and we didn't do anything in pesos. A lot of places that convert, um, it may be at a less favorable rate. Honestly, I don't get too wrapped up in that stuff. I think that you know the US dollar probably goes a little bit further anyways, so worrying about conversion rates and that kind of thing, it's really not that big of a deal. So what is it like to drive in Mexico? Honestly, it's not very different than driving in the US, except there are some things you have to be aware of. So the first thing, you have these speed bumps all over the place called topes, and they are in the middle of roads everywhere. Some of them are marked really well. Some of them, like here in Tulum on the beach road, aren't marked at all. So you have to look out for those. Um, you will see those in the middle of busy highways and you'll also see them on very narrow roads as well. Some roads are also very narrow, so they may be too narrow for two cars to actually go different ways at the same time, so watching out for that, watching out for blind turns, people will just pass you, you know, for no reason, but I mean that kind of stuff happens in New York too, so um, it's just really being aware and you have to be not necessarily aggressive, but you do have to be assertive, you gotta go, you really have to be a very confident driver. You also have to watch out for speed limits that are changing all the time, sometimes for no reason at all. Now the trip that we took was from the Cancun airport down Highway 307, which is a pretty large busy four-lane highway two lanes going each way and that road is great and then to go into Tulum where we stayed once you get into the town of Tulum you make a left on 15 or I don't remember what the name of the road is Boca Paella. Boca Paella Road thank you wife um, and that road is a very narrow you know no lines really or anything for the majority of the road People walking everywhere, bikes. Yeah, you have people walking everywhere, you have bicycles, you have motorcycles, you have carts that are carrying fruit, stuff like that. <laughs> um, you really have to be very, very aware. And you do have to keep a good speed too because, I mean, people will pass you, they will go all around you. Now, a couple other tips. <laughs> now, a couple other... <laughs> 
Now, a couple other tips for safety. Make sure that when you are at intersections, not that this stuff happens very often, I would recommend this everywhere in the US as well, lock your doors. Make sure that the doors on your car are locked. At some intersections, you will have people approach you asking for money or trying to sell you something or whatever. Make sure your doors are locked. I also probably would recommend rolling up your windows. Again, not just in Mexico, any in any city in the world, that would be my recommendation. So it's the next day, obviously. We're now driving to the airport. We have about an hour and 45 minute drive from Tulum back to the Cancun airport. And there are a couple tips that I wanted to mention that I forgot when I was filming this video yesterday. So the first thing is when you pick up your car, make sure you actually check the condition of the car. So check the tires, check to make sure the headlights work, check to make sure that your wipers actually work and that you have wiper fluid. If you remember, the topes are the speed bumps. You can definitely damage your car pretty severely by running over topes at full speed. If you're driving on like a wide open four lane highway like 307, you'll see a lot of times before the topes, um, people will actually put their flashers on to indicate that there is a tope up ahead. Now, another thing that I learned the hard way in Mexico was that if you're driving down like a two lane road or two lane highway and you wanna make a left, you don't just sit, you know, slow down, sit in the middle of your lane and signal left and wait for the traffic to clear and make a left. You actually need to pull completely off of the road, pull onto the shoulder, whatever, wait for all of the lanes of traffic to be clear and then make your left turn. If there isn't a shoulder, then what you technically are supposed to do, to my knowledge, is to actually slow down to a stop, put your hazards on and signal with your hand out your window that you're making a left. The reason being, if you're just on the road and you just have your left turn signal on, what that actually means to the cars behind you is that it's safe for them to pass you, which is definitely the opposite thing if you're sitting and waiting for traffic on the other side to clear in order to make a left turn. Something else that a lot of websites will recommend when it comes to driving in Mexico is not to drive at night. Reason being, well, there's a lot of reasons, I guess, but livestock will oftentimes sit in the middle of the road or lay down. Obviously, at night, you can't really see them very well. Um, you also don't really know what the road conditions are like, so the road conditions may not be very good, and you don't know, and there may not be marked uh, construction signs and things like that to indicate that the road you know, isn't necessarily in good driving condition. It's just, I guess, better not to drive at night, but I didn't experience any like real difficulties. Not that we really drove a lot at night, um, but even like late in the day when the visibility wasn't as good, um, I would say probably the biggest thing is topes for the most part. Um, they're hard enough to see during the day if you're not like on a main road. Um, so definitely at night, even more difficult. Uh, so, you know, probably best to just keep your driving during the day. And honestly, I don't think there's really much of a need in most places, especially tourist areas, to actually drive at night. Another thing when it comes to traffic lights, making a right on red is illegal unless it's otherwise marked. And a yellow light actually means come to a stop. So what'll happen is a green light obviously means go. Um, the green light will be flashing green when it's about to turn yellow. And once it's yellow, you need to come to a stop. You cannot be running yellow lights in Mexico. So if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and please hit the subscribe button to support this channel and also head over to a Wander Affair, check out all of the videos from this trip. They should be up by mid to late February and make sure you subscribe to that channel as well as go to the GoPro giveaway video on that channel and comment on that to be entered into the giveaway. Thanks again for taking this foreign test drive with me and I'll talk to you soon.